Greetings, fellow humans. Welcome to Sam and Max Hit the Books. I'm Max. I'm Sam. And we have the comics that we decided to review that came out on uh, April 10th, 2019. Right, right. Three days ago. Three days ago. Kind of an okay week. Well, there was a lot. There was a lot of stuff, and nothing was super standout. Um, let's start with Hawkman, issue 11, by Robert Venditti, Brian Hitch. Um, still good. Still good, yeah. Lots of good action. Um, mostly action. Really enjoyed seeing uh, <clears throat> the giant uh, Barbados World Forger Hawkman uh, showing up. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I guess that definitely counts as another Hawkman. <laughs> <laughs> um, although, it, you know, when you think of it as like him pulling other hymns from other points in time kind of weird it's like when when it was doing like evil stuff for the world forager or as a world forager was he like pulled away to do this i feel like it was summoned by the one before it or did i just read that in right for some reason i thought he summoned this oh the the wild west version yeah Yeah. no i think he was just he was just talking to him and like fully, everybody's fully understanding what's happening, which I did enjoy. Yeah, I mean we can hand wave away a lot of that, but I got to be honest, the story needed to be over in this issue. Oh yeah, it's weird that it didn't end, and it's weird that it didn't end. And like now we have to do a countdown to super weapon destruction. It was a lot of fighting and yelling at each other between Carter and Edom. Oh yeah, um, yeah. This this. This issue felt like a lot of padding to me, weirdly. Like, it was good, it was well-delivered, like, it was well-drawn, it was cool action, cool to see all the different Hawkmen. Right, no, it, it's it's fanfare. But, yeah, it's like, man, really? Like, is it going to be a whole another issue of this same plot line? But, right, man. Right. Maybe three more issues. Yeah, so, this is a five to me. Okay, honestly. I'll give it a six. All right. Fair mm. enough. Yeah. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about the newest issue of Prodigy, uh, Mark Miller, Raphael Albuquerque. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so in this issue, he does what he said he was going to do. He runs through the temple. He memorizes the walls, what it's all about on the temple. His plan doesn't quite go uh, perfectly because he ends up uh, getting shot at one point, probably because he's got so many of his uh, inner people working on the asteroid situation. Right, right. <clears throat> but it eventually knocks him out. He man- he manages to escape with help from his uh, friends. But uh, he ends up in the hospital anyway. And then you got a l- real nice scene of him waking up on the operating table and there's one surgeon around while all the others are getting ready. And he's about to start cutting him open and he's just immediately like, wait, no, I don't want you to do this. Clearly, you're only, like, 24 years old. Right. You need somebody more experienced. But then he passes out, and the dude does it anyway, and he's fine. I was impressed in this issue with how much I remembered of the previous issue. <laughs> like, this was the first time reading this comic when I really felt like I wasn't playing catch-up. Right, where you knew where you were and what was going on. I agree. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, I did not see the twist coming at all. The twist. Yeah. Oh, right, right, but the girl. Yeah, yeah, that uh, yeah. The girl's been working for the this, villains all along. Yeah, yeah, the evil cult, because if you've ever seen the show Fringe, what's happened here is that an alternate Earth that was very uh, barbaric and uh, lives under one king uh, destroyed their world, basically, like it, and they want to come uh, destroy this world. Yeah, that old... <laughs> That'll rag. Yeah, so they created a vacuum, like in the show Fringe, which creates a bridge between worlds. But, like in Fringe, <laughs> it can also be a time travel device, and when they use it, the guy they send goes way back in time, so he has to build this cult to make sure that the plan goes through, because it won't happen within his lifetime. Yeah, man, this really is, like, action Fringe. It's action sh- Fringe. It's, it's Sherlock Fringe. <laughs> Definitely Sherlock. <laughs> Interesting. Hilarious. Interesting. I, no, I laughed out loud when, especially with the picture of the two Earths together and the bridge between them. That's just, that's French right there. That's the vacuum. Well, I could see why uh, Netflix would be interested in developing something French-like. 
Um, yeah. It was, it was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually give this one a uh, 7. I thought it was uh, alright. As decent as Prodigy Kids. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the art in the first few pages of uh, our guy rushing through the temple and all the speed lines in action. And I oh, thought yeah. uh, it was all very, very cinematic. <clears throat> um, good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to give this a six. Uh-huh. All right, moving on to issue seven. Uh, not the last issue of Murder Falcon, as I think we said last time we reviewed Murder Falcon. Yeah, well, I have no idea. But... <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's true, it's funny. We, we, uh, we, our characters go to Japan and need to put the uh, Japanese orchestra, which uh, summons a, uh avatar beast that I was quite pleased to see since I've been playing Sekiro and seeing all this, like, super oh, samurai action god stuff happening. And... Uh, so that was pretty cool. And, uh, of course, the big twist of the issue, when Jake uh, rips off the wig he's been wearing <laughs> oh, all man. along. That's so and, funny. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's all well drawn, and uh, it's dramatic, and our hero has his, uh, like, weird Harry Potter and Dumbledore conversation. Yeah, that's exactly what I, rem- what I thought of as well. This Harry Potter and Dumbledore. Right, sitting at the bus station in, in like, <laughs> because, a washed-out white world. Right, because the villain has put a part of him in you. Right, which, so I guess the implication is that he, this is what the villain has done to all those people we see that have, like, a tendril coming out of their head, like, laying in a hospital bed. Yeah. And so that's going to happen to him if they don't stop this. Uh, I think he stopped it himself already. You think he's already... It feels like when he woke up that, that was like, nope, that's not happening to me. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Um, so, yeah, they take out that kaiju. And <laughs> <Yep>. uh, <clears throat> I guess that's... Yeah, we got one more. Yeah, we're moving on. Well, do we know that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because it says uh, second to last letters page on the letters page of this issue. So oh, all right. There you go. One yeah. more. Um, so, yeah, Murder Falcon uh, continues to be good. Uh, I really enjoyed this issue. I liked the characterization, all the stuff with the orchestra was cool the girl yeah. playing keytar was yeah, cool that was cool um yeah this is a this is a seven for me yeah i'd give it a seven as well enjoyable up to its usual standard up to its usual standard definitely want to get more stuff from dana warren johnson whatever he puts out is going to be worth getting i think yeah yeah he's uh he, he and the fact that they have a, a hilarious or crazy or sad twist on nearly every episode that you do <laughs> not see coming at all. It's paced perfectly for monthly comic books. There's always a thing where you're like, oh, that's how it is? Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, okay. Now that everything's changed for the next issue. Oh, that's how it is? Ah, oh, man. Just great. <clears throat> Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Oh, right. Next, we got the Batman Who Last. Forgot that was me. Uh, this is, uh, Scott Snyder. You got it. And, uh, Jock. J- just, just Jock. Just Jock. Right. Just Jock. <laughs> <laughs> and Jock. Yeah. <clears throat> There's that ugly ass Dick Grayson Robin costume. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be Dick Grayson at first. It's like, that's his costume. That's his costume. But, yeah, we got, uh, in this issue, we got Batman. It seems like he's just letting enough of... The Joker talks him into himself now so that he can, uh, like, walk the tightrope to uh, see what's going on, but still be in control enough to not kill anybody. Right. We finally get the uh, origin of what the Batman Who Laughs eyepiece is and how he can see at all while wearing a right. giant piece of metal across his face. And, of course, it's Dark Knight's metal, yeah. you know, metal with a capital M. And uh, yeah. it allows him to focus in on uh, view, viewing the something of the multiverse. Like, he can see, you can see something. He sees something creepy. Yeah, see through the multiverse in a creepy way. He can see whatever the man <laughs> who laughs sees, which is apparently some sort of weird special way of seeing. It's very unclear to me exactly yeah, no, it's what's vague. going it's, on. It's vague as hell. But we get a nice little bit where uh, the Joker takes it from him, the... <laughs> the, the, the Mask the blindfold, and uh, then then they they trade some punches. Uh, mostly Alfred just hits Batman real hard in the face a lot. Right, Alfred takes it from him, not the Joker. Did I say the Joker, Joker shows us later. Yeah, 
No, no, I said Alfred. No, you said Joker, bro. We have it on recording. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I mean, Alfred, yeah, we get to see Alfred uh, punch uh, Bruce Wayne in the face a bunch of times. It's, that was funny. It's pretty fun. I was really, like, I kept looking at the panels to be sure, like, wait, is are they fighting or is Alfred just cleaning his clock? Well, Alfred's cleaning his clock. That's <laughs> really ridiculous. Jock is having a good time drawing the asymmetrical eyes of uh, crazy Bruce Wayne, though, in this issue. Yeah, yeah, real red, different sizes, uh, different patterns. Yeah, it's, different it's, pupils. Yeah, it's, it, it's it's real weird, but uh, <laughs> Batman and Alfred, they, they hug it out, so that's good. <clears throat> and we get some... Uh, uh, Batman, Batman who laughs. Yes, that is no also sh- his name. It's, it's his whole, whole name. It's his whole name, <laughs> you have to say it every time. Batman who laughs uh, explains everything about his Gordon to Gordon, uh, just taunting him. Right. And, uh, yeah, he, he wants to have some fun with Gordon, and Grim Knight is there. And he, he, he wants to just, uh, he wants to kill Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to kill him on, like, more even terms. He doesn't want to just, like, torture him to death. He wants to hunt him down in his city. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, uh, what, what, what's, uh, what's James Go- Gordon? Gordon's son's name? James. Yeah. Yeah, James Gordon. He's helping Batman still. Yeah, he's on the phone with him. He's talking him through some things, and we find out that Batman had an encounter with the Joker <clears throat> in recent memory. Right. And, uh, Joker they, showed up. And promised to kill him if, uh, if he won, but was consumed by the Batman who laughs this because they kind of admit that they're in a story for a little while and Joker's like no I love the game right right I don't <laughs> want any of us to, either of us to win oh uh, yeah that, that's that's funny and Batman doesn't believe obviously that any of his friends would uh, kill him if the Joker talks and took him over so right. needs somebody to do it needs somebody to do it and Joker would do it yeah and but uh, yeah he, Batman figures out where the next Bruce Wayne's coming out and so he goes uh, to what, what's this place called? R- Rothgate uh, prison. Is it Blackgate? Blackgate. I don't know where they're going, right? Yeah. So he goes to Blackgate, where the portal opens, and for a minute he's right. zapped through into uh, another Batman's universe, where no. Rothgate is a big old prison, and uh, Bruce Wayne is the prison warden. No, not unlike Fringe again. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then. Uh, at, uh, yeah, what's all this about? Oh yeah, they get back, but and it turns out the guard that was helping Batman was actually Batman who laughed. Right, in right. Disguise. And then he, he puts his disguise back on and to all the other guards, he's like, "That's the Batman who laughs." Everybody shoot him because Batman's real wearing Batman. the spiky eyepiece. Yeah, so everybody thinks he is <laughs> that Batman anyway. And yeah, we get the reveal of Batman who laughs eyes. The first time we've ever seen him without his, oh, his right, spiky grate on. And he's a Bruce Wayne, too. And he's a Bruce Wayne, too. But his eyes, yeah, they are black portals with little with bright white pupils. Devil's eyes. Demon's <clears throat> eyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this issue was all right. It was all right. I, I wanted to... The cover, it has, like, a cable running from his visor down to his utility belt. And I don't know why that was really intriguing me on the cover, and then he doesn't even have it in the book, and it's a weird thing to get annoyed by, but what was happening here? <laughs> the cover's drawn by the guy who's drawing me inside. Ah, maybe it's a, <laughs> it's a clue. <laughs> what would you give it? Um, yeah, I'd give it a six. Yeah. That was pretty good. Yeah, I think it's six. It's fine. It's well drawn. I like Jock's art. But yeah. It's fine. Right, well, the plot is a little meandering is the only thing. <laughs> it's like, doesn't have to be two more issues? Like, this is only issue four? Like, <laughs> right. what else yeah. can happen, man? It's, it's plodding along. Alright, so moving on to issue 1001 of Detective Comics with the brand spanking new logo. Um, this arc was teased, of course, at the end of uh, Detective 1000 with the little mm. monologue from the Arkham Knight who's got a bunch of cultists that he's created for some weird cult of justice and every all the bats in gotham are dying in the cave and outside of the cave and you know batman never at any point says like i wonder if this is somebody trying to like threaten me or 
tell me something, all these dead bats. <laughs> like, no. Right, no, that's true, he doesn't. <laughs> I was really sure that was going to come up in Detective Comics. <laughs> um, but uh, Kirk Langstrom's mm-hmm. wife shows up, and I, she's also man... Like, what is her name when she turns into man bat? I only remember that happening in the cartoon. I don't I don't know that I've ever seen this happen well, in the I'm comics. pretty sure she's still just called man bat. She, wouldn't, she isn't called, like, woman, woman bat? bat? Nah, <laughs> nah. Well, man bat. <clears throat> Yeah, nah. If, if a woman became the Joker, that woman would be called the Joker. Oh. Same thing, you know? It's villains. Villain names are not but, so... But Man Bat also exists and is referenced in this issue as, like, Kirk is a separate person, so... Right, no, they're both not Ma- Man Bat. But so if another person became the Joker while Joker was still Joker... Would they both be the Joker? Because... Huh? That's good. Because there's well, a we character. Had two Harley Quinns. Well, there's a character named the Joker's daughter, and that's her name, Joker's daughter. Well, that's different. <laughs> An offspring. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, gosh, he fights with man, Batwoman, and then it's daytime. That's the thing I forgot, right? It's Woman daytime all of a sudden. It's literally like you turn a page, and they've launched. Some sort of thing into the sky. It's a satellite of some kind that's created an artificial day. They yeah. reverse Mr. Burns to Gotham City. <laughs> <laughs> right, perpetual daytime. That's hilarious. And uh, Batman mm-hmm. tries to fight with all these. Uh, what? Is, oh yeah, they're like samurai, right? Modern, yeah. Oh, knights. That's what he calls them. Yeah, knights right. makes sense. Arkham Knight. Right, right. And they've nice. got like leathery armor with armor pieces and knight masks. Yeah, their armor faces. seems pretty strong for being. Uh, so leathery looking. Right. And uh, then Batman gets trounced by them and Arkham Knight shows up. And yeah, they shoot a lot of arrows in the Batman. Batman like, just a ton of arrows. He hits it with like a Game of Thrones amount of arrows. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I know he's wearing an armored suit and everything, but damn. I mean, the arrows are long. Those things are going into his body. <laughs> now, uh... I want to say that uh, I've never read anything, I think, drawn by this Brad Walker character, and I really enjoyed the art in this issue. I really liked his Gordon. Um, yeah. I liked the way he drew everybody's faces, and the action was good and action-y. So, uh, yeah, I really I really enjoyed this artist on this issue. Um, I like the way he draws the bat cowl with really wide ears. Like, they're <laughs> narrow and not that tall, but very wide. Like, they'd go up the whole side of his face. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little different. I kind of like it. I like it, too. And he makes a point also to draw the little uh, reflections that show that Batman's wearing lenses. And that's why his eyes are whited out. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, rather than just have it be white eyes. You're right. Which is that's very unusual, but uh, mm. I, was, I was appreciating the little details like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I really I enjoyed this issue. Uh, I think as much as or more than anything else I read this week, I'd give this one a 7. I'd give it a 7 as well. That was, yeah, as good as anything else. Alrighty. Alright, issue 10 of Superman, The Wrath of Jor-El. Brian Michael Bendis, Ivan Reese. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so <laughs> this is the kind of the end, but maybe not, of the uh, Superboy telling his parents about his uh, journey through the years before coming back uh, as a grown, uh, grown-ass grown teenager. Yeah, so this is the thing. In this issue, is it basically implying that he spent, like, eight years on Earth 3? Yeah. That's how he grew up? Like, he spent all that time in that, like, in that prison. lava prison thing? Yeah. That kid should be insane. Oh, yeah, with only that fucked up gangster talking Superman to come and talk to him once in a while and like then get angry at him and fly off uh, he he's definitely should have some uh, issues tra- trauma yeah, yeah <laughs> some I'm serious wondering. trauma and it sure seems like he doesn't it, right because when uh, Superman's like you ready to get back out there and go punch uh, grandpa yeah and he's like yeah let's do it yeah, I wonder if there's going to be a twist to that. Yeah, but he, he manages to get off of that crappy planet. Yeah, because Grandpa. Grandpa was... came for him, and uh, Grandpa was looking pretty cool in this issue, uh, you know, with his big old spaceship and whatnot. Uh, his beard and uh, mohawk. 
Yeah, makes me wish that they could have gotten some uh, grandpa grandson sci fi stories uh, out of uh, yeah. this rather than just some some crappy uh, going through hell for Superboy. Yeah, it was like a one montage in one issue of like the various adventures they went on. Right, helping people and yeah. stuff. Doing Green Lantern esque shit. Yeah, that would have been cool to see. That would have been cool to see. It would have been nice, but we don't get that. Instead, we get Grandpa goes insane. <laughs> and Superboy gets whisked away back home. Because Rogals are. Rogals are. Guess what, everyone? Your favorite. He's back. <laughs> He's back. The yeah. hot, hottest character of twenty seven or 2018. <laughs> He's back. It's Rogals are. That's right. He's out there. Yeah, yeah. And he broke their ship. So that's too bad. And, like, so Clark's like, okay, let's go punch Grandpa, <laughs> but so I'm going to take you out where Rogals are probably is, and we're going to fight him together, son? Mm. Like, well, what's happening here? You know, it's not quite as good as Superman and Zod versus Rogals are, but, you know, maybe it'll help. Mm. Or, uh, I, three generations of the L family versus Rogalzar oh, next no. issue. Oh, no. We'll <laughs> see. Man, Rogalzar, everyone's favorite. He's back. Yeah. That's, uh, that's about what happened in this issue. They, oh, yeah, they Superman, go up to space. Superman, they're going to space. And there's they're space flying war. up to space. And, yeah, there's some crazy space war where I couldn't really get too much information out of this last picture of what was going on I mean, at all. I mean, Thanagar's there. Yeah, Thanagar was there. You can tell that much. <laughs> I don't know what these people are. Right, right. Some, or some these flying guys. lizard men. Yeah. And some, uh, some frost giants. It seems very frost giant-y. Yeah, well, the art was good. The art was good. The story was okay. I give it a five. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give it a four. All right. And that is it. Thanks for checking out our reviews this week, everybody. And have a great day.